Robert Maxwell with The Man Factory, and in this video I'm going to be reviewing the Reebok Lifter PR shoes, giving my impressions on these as I put them on and then as I do a squat workout with them. I've uh, actually had these shoes sitting in the box for a few months now. I've been wearing my old Adidas lifting shoes, but I've decided to give these a try now because I've been having some issues with the bar path in my squat and I think part of the problem boils down to my lack of ankle dorsiflexion. My dorsiflexion in my ankles, that is my ankle's ability to tilt forward in relation to my foot, is not terrible, but the Reebok Lifter PRs have a little thicker heel than what my Adidas shoes have, and that's one reason I want to give them a try now. If you look closely here, you can see that the heel thickness on these shoes is uh, actually close to an inch. It would be a little bit less than that in practice, because of how deeply your heel would sit inside uh, against the sole of the shoe, the insole, that is. But, uh, but from the outside, you're looking at about an inch of material, which probably translates to about three quarters of an inch of actual heel thickness. Now, my Adidas power lifts, I think they are, um, have only about 0 0.6 inches of heel thickness in practice, which might not seem like a huge difference, 0 0.6 to 3 quarters of an inch, but it can make quite an impact on bar path and overall squat technique. So that's one reason I want to give these a try. And the first step to giving you my thoughts and impressions is to put them on my feet and see how they feel. So just before I put these on and let you know how they feel, I want to draw your attention to a couple of things. Like all weightlifting shoes or squat shoes, these have a hard, flat sole to them. And that's so that you can maximize the efficiency of force transference from your feet and through your whole body into the floor um, so that the greatest amount of possible surface area in contact with your foot is in also in contact with the floor. Like I mentioned, um, the heel thickness of these is probably slightly above average compared to your regular lifting shoes. But all lifting shoes, if you're not familiar with them, have a thicker heel than at the toe and, and that is to in effect tilt the body forward and allow the foot to be in firm contact with the floor when the heel is actually slightly raised which is uh, an advantageous position for moving weight. So let's put these on, see how they feel on my feet here. Right away I can tell they've got quite a bit more padding than my old Adidas lifting shoes. I won't know until I've done some squats in these if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I like my lifting shoes pretty tightly tied so that they're not moving around on my foot loosely when I'm squatting heavy weights. I like the fact that the laces are plenty long on these. For whatever reason, the laces of my Adidas shoes were almost always barely long enough to tie. That's not a problem with these. I'll do up the Velcro straps here. Again, I like the straps of my lifting shoes to be done up pretty tight for support. Now, there's one thing I'm noticing right off the bat. The shoes feel solid and they're very comfortable because of the extra padding, but something that I'm not particularly crazy about at this point is the fact that these velcro straps are fairly far forward on the body of the shoe. They feel like they're too far forward on my foot to support me in the way I'm used to being supported. Um, my Adidas lifting shoes, for example, have the strap almost touching the tongue of the shoe. So, you know, at least an inch, an inch and a half back from where these straps are. Now that may or may not actually be an issue when I'm squatting, but it just feels a little funny to me right now because of what I'm used to. But as far as the feel of the shoes themselves, they feel very solid and there's not any compressibility that I can feel as I put my weight on them, which is exactly what you want in a good lifting shoe. You don't want any cushion, any compressibility between your foot and the contact of the shoe with the floor. So when I squat down in these, 
I can definitely feel the difference made by the thicker heel. It, it's easier for me to achieve this squat depth position here, even with just my body weight. Not that it gave me particular trouble getting into this position in my old shoes or even barefoot. I've got enough flexibility for that. But it is somewhat easier and more comfortable with these thicker heels here. So I'm down in the gym now, just strapping on and tying up the shoes to try them for my first squat workout. I've noticed one more potential issue with the design of the shoes. It has to do with the straps, more specifically the buckle that uh, the strap goes through. I've already mentioned how these straps on this particular pair of shoes are further forward than I'm used to and that may bother me with future use, I'm not sure yet. But the buckle itself is made of white plastic and that really does give me pause because I know how tightly I'm going to be tugging these straps through that buckle to get the tension around my feet in these shoes that I need. And I have a strong suspicion that over time that buckle will weaken and probably break. I'd really love to see a metal buckle and the fact that it's plastic may have stopped me from purchasing these shoes if I'd known that. I didn't know. But time will tell how this plastic buckle holds up. Here I am warming up with the empty bar. My first impression when I put on the shoes was that they felt pretty loose, and they ended up taking a little more effort than I was used to to tighten up to the level that I wanted. A fair bit of tugging on the laces and the straps was needed, but in the end, I found I was able to get them tight enough and they felt good and supportive. Well, the empty bar felt pretty good with the new shoes. So far, so good. Let's see how it feels with 135. This next warm-up set with 135 felt very good. I became more aware of the increased heel thickness of these shoes and how it was changing my squat dynamic for the better. I found that the solid feeling of the shoes was particularly apparent at the bottom of each rep, where previously with my old shoes, my heels had tended to lift up a little bit. I just wasn't able to achieve that solid connection with the floor throughout the movement because of probably a combination of lack of flexibility and the fact that the weight may have been traveling a little too far over my toes. These shoes really helped with that. I found that the feeling of connection with the floor was very solid. And as I worked up to my final working weight of this workout, which was 225, that feeling of solid connection with the floor only increased. Now, 225 is not normally a lot of weight for me at all, but I'm coming back from an injury and I didn't want to push it too far too fast. But these shoes felt very good for every set that I did, and the increased heel thickness is definitely a big positive for a squatter with my particular limb lengths and leverages. Okay, so that's it for the squat session. I'm not going any heavier than 225 today because I'm coming back from a lumbar injury, but as far as I could discern today, the Reebok Lifter PRs are a great set of lifting shoes. I really like the raised heel, as I thought I would. It helped me stay in firm, solid contact with the floor, and I was able to tighten up the shoes using the laces and the straps so that they felt comfortable and provided plenty of support despite the more forward location of the straps. So I don't think that'll be a big concern moving forward. My only real concern, like I said earlier in the video, is the fact that the buckles on these shoes are made of plastic and not metal. I'll probably do a part two of this video when I'm back to my full strength lifting heavier weights than this. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.